bosco ya Hadi mami thank you Just hold on. Kita kita apa? Ah? So this is going to be like this. In every 40 minutes, it's going to be changed. So we have to rejoin it again. 40, every 40 minutes. Every 40 minutes, it will be changed again. Okay, so the same thing, you have to rejoin again. Okay. So just hold on. Okay, ma'am. Yes. We'll just wait for the sharing. I cannot share yet. Okay, so going back, so we are talking about, sorry. What do you want to eat? Huh? Ura. <laughs> Ura. Hi. <laughs> hey, day. Hello. Hello to Hana. Hana. <laughs> Salam alaikum. Hi everything, everybody there. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Break time, break time. <laughs> we will have a break later, okay? We just started. So we will have a break. Okay. Okay, so the screen shared with you now. You have it? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay, so let's continue. We are already in the skills and qualifications of a nursing aid, right? Yeah. So as I said, I will repeat again. So all of this, we are going to have it as a pre or a prerequisite to become a nursing aid. Okay. So what are the attributing skills? So when having or when we are or before we go with the nursing aid, so we must have an attributing skills. What do you mean by attributing skills? So like for example, if you are a nursing aid, you are going to have all of this to, to, to have it as in you are going to practice it or you are going to show to your patients what you have as a nursing aid. So number one, we have a compassionate skill. You must be compassionate, okay? You must have your yeah. compassion in dealing with your patients. You cannot be a nursing aide without yeah. the compassion. Okay, so yeah. number one of the skills, you yeah. must be compassionate nursing aide. So number two, we have the strong decision-making skills. Strong decision-making skills while working, you have your own strong decision-making skills. You must be reliable. They will be depending on you. So if you are going to be alone with your patient, you have to maintain that excellent, 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 excellent skills. Excellent attention to details. 
what do you mean by excellent attention to details? When you are going to be with your patient, you must be attentive. You must be focused. You must know what those colleagues or the doctors or the nurses are going to tell you. You are going to be attentive. Okay? An excellent listener. A nursing aide should be an excellent listener. You cannot be working if you are not going to listen. You have to listen to your patients. You have to listen to the family. You have to listen from, uh, from your doctors, your nurses. You are not going to be alone here, working alone. So you have an excellent listening skill. Good communication skill. In working with I mean, the uh, medical healthcare facility or with the medical people, you must have a good communication skills. Means to say, if you are not so good enough for the English, so you can show them by showing them your gestures, showing them the nonverbal. But most of all, as we are in other country, so we have to exercise our English language. To, so better to communicate with other people. Problem solving skills. For nursing aid, you must be able to help that problem solving skills. How you are going to solve a problem if you yourself, you don't know how to deal with the problem. So you are going to solve the problem if you only deal with it so you can solve it properly and appropriately. Good ethical standards. So for the nursing aid and so with other professions, you must have or you must maintain a good ethical standard. Ethical standard mean you are always working under the law. So there are legalities that we must follow and we have to, uh, we are mandated to follow them whatever standards or whatever ethics they, they are going to implement, we have to comply to them. Ability to maintain interpersonal relationship in a workplace, especially in a healthcare facility, we have to maintain our interpersonal relationship, especially to your patients. You have to establish a good interpersonal relationship with them and the family, same with the family too. Supportive, as, as a skill of a nursing aid, you must be supportive. As we have said from the previous, we, we are going to support. We are a supporter to the nursing, the, the, the nursing staff. We are not going to work alone. There are nurses over us. There are doctors over us. We are not going to work alone or we are not going to work independently. So we have our nurses, we have our doctors who are going to guide us and to be with us. So uh, being dependable, as I said, as a nursing aide, you must be dependable. As a human being, you are practicing or you have your own uh, characteristic of being dependable. People are being dependent on you. I mean, your family is being dependent on you. So as with the patients, Patients are being dependent on you because they need you to assist them, to support them in every way. Physically fit. You must be physically fit. What, 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 uh, what does it mean by physically fit? You cannot just come to the patient if you are not physically fit. If you are not physically fit, do you think the patient will be healed? or the patient will recover if they are going to see you that you are not physically fit. Patients are not, most of them are not healthy. They are not fit. Okay, so we are going to show them how physically fit we are in dealing with our patients. Good nature. Usually, good nature is by, uh, I mean, human individual. It is individual nature that you are going to produce it from your side. You are going to be nurtured. You are going to be natured, good natured. And this is just showing off 
automatically, instantly. Whatever you have, your attitude, your behavior, your professionalism, it is in your good nature individual. It will just show off. Next. So now we are going to talk about the job description, the rules and responsibilities, the duties of a nursing aide. So are you ready now to hear what are the, uh, the, the duties and responsibilities that you are going to do once you finish this course? Okay, yes. so number one, the first and foremost, again, to provide basic patient care under the direction of nursing, nursing staff. So we will not be, I'm going to repeat it to you, as nursing aid, you will not be working independently. You will be working, providing patient care under the direction of your nursing staff. You cannot just do whatever you wanted to do without the order or without the direction of your nursing staff. Just remember that you are not going to work independently. The nursing staff or the nursing in charge or the nurse head nurse is going to be with you or you are going to be under your nursing, nursing staff. Okay, remember that you are not going to work independently. You will be working under the direction of nursing staff. Providing physical support to assist patients to perform activities of daily living. So this is your basic, uh, I mean, nursing responsibility is to perform activities of daily living. What are those activities of daily living? If someone is going to ask you now, what is your main role? as a nursing aide. So you are go out going to answer back to perform. You are going to perform activities of daily living. And what are those activities of daily living? They are feeding. You are going to okay. feed the patient. You are going to uh, support the patient getting out of the to bed. Assist, to assist you are to assist cutting, dressing, You're going to the toilet, is standing, walking, aiding in mobility, exercising. All of these are the activities of daily living. Okay, so remember that. So taking and recording of vital signs is also another role and responsibility of a nursing aide. So such as we are going to take or we are going to measure patients' vital signs. They are the blood pressure, temperature, pulse, respiration rate, weight, height, we have the oxygen saturation, and we have the blood pressure. Okay, so all of this, we are going to do this under the direction of a nursing head nurse or the nursing in charge. Document or otherwise report observation of patient's behavior complaints or physical symptoms to nurses. If you are going to be with your patient, definitely you are going to observe, you are going to report, you are going to document. Document means you are going to record. Whatever you observe with your patients, you have to record it. You have to report it, okay? So whatever you see with your patient, let your nursing, nursing in charge in charge knows what are you doing. Measure and record food and liquid intake or urinary and fecal output, reporting changes to nursing staff. So what does it mean? Measuring means if your patient are just not eating or if your patient are bloated or, or uh, having a diarrhea, so you are going to report or you have to record all of the food intake, whatever food he or she is going to take, you have to record it. And whatever output means to say the urine, the stool, the vomiting, the vomitus, you have to report it all, okay? So whatever changes, there is a little of urine, a little of stool, 
lose his tool and everything you have to report to your nursing in charge. Assist in patient transfer or transport. Lift or assist patients to move from one bed to another, to the operating room, surgical table, going to the x-ray, going to uh, operating room, going to the lab laboratory. All of this, you have to assist, you have to support, you have to be with your patients. Promptly answers to calls from patients needing assistance or treatment to determine patients needs and, and alert the medical staff to any imminent emergency situation. Why we need to report? Why we need to promptly inform our nurses, our nursing in charge? Because they know and they are going to be the one reporting to the doctor in case of emergency, in case of anything that, need the, that the patient is going to, to require. So all of those, we have to report it. Number seven is we have to promptly, uh, sorry, turn or reposition bedridden patient. Most of our patients in the nursing home, it's going to be bedridden. Most of them are elderly. Very less are going to be the, uh, the adult or the younger ones. So most of our, our patients are going to be, I mean, elderly or the bedridden ones. So all of this, we have to reposition them because they don't need to be in one position for all of the time. So we have to reposition them. We have to help them move. We have to lift, we are going to lift them up or reposition them or transfer them in the other bed. We have to engage in housekeeping tasks. Why housekeeping? You might be asking, why you are going to be involved in housekeeping? You are not a housekeeper, right? But it is a part of your roles and responsibility or the job description of a nursing aide to be able to clean the patient care area, a place where the patient is there. Why? Because in a clean room, the patient is going to recover very fast. So just imagine if the patient or you are there in a patient care area and your patient care area is so dirty. How do you expect that your patient is going to heal? How is your patient going to recover soon? So better for us, us uh, housekeeping. This is a part of our nursing aid task. We are going to clean our patient care area. Where are you working with the patient? It must be clean. It must be tidy. It must be, uh, I mean, we have to change the bed. As part of, of housekeeping task, we have to change the patient's linen. We are all, always going, uh, I mean, we are always doing it in our daily lives, right? So this is a part of activities of a daily living. We are changing our beds. So we are cleaning our patient rooms. We are removing also the trash. So all of this is a part in a housekeeping for a nursing aide. Number 10 is to exercise patients who are unable to move or have restricted mobility. Those patients you are going to encounter, most of them, they are not able to walk properly. They have restrictions. They have limited ability to move. So then we are going to help our patients in their daily exercises. If active patients, those active patients, you can just assist them. You can just support them whenever they are exercising. But when your patients are bedridden, unable to move, they needed a mobility device or help to assist them in walking, or you are going to assist them to support them if they are going to move. Number 11 is to administer therapy treatments to patients using hands or physical treatment aids. What do you mean by this? So as the nursing aid, we are going to help them, support them, in provide, providing them physical therapy. 
If like, for example, the physical therapist comes to your patient, so when the, the physical therapist goes, you are going to be able, you are going to, uh, I mean, to exercise, to provide those exercises to your patients while seeing or while following or while doing what the physical therapist do. So you can do it with your patients too. Feed patients or assist patients to eat or drink. This is the feeding thing. You have to assist the patient in feeding. You have to provide food or you have to prepare food to serve, uh, to serve food in the trays. Or if there is anything like there is a tube feeding, we have to assist those patients while we are going to give the feeding by the tube. Clean and sanitize patient rooms, bathrooms, examination rooms, or other patient rooms. If we don't have a patient of our own, so we are going out to, like for example, the clinics. You are going out with other nurses to help them out with their clinic room in the doctor's office to clean for the instruments, to clean the examination room, to prepare the patients for uh, the examination of the patients, okay? So we have to provide a clean and sanitized room always. Supply, collect, or empty bed pans. So we have to supply those like, um, I mean, uh, what are the things that a clinic should use? What are the things, the equipments that a patient care room should use? So all of this, we have to initiate ourselves to check on the supplies, whether it's going to be enough for the eight hours, for the working, uh, for the working time within eight hours. You have to check all of those supplies to be enough for the day. Apply clean dressings slings, stock things, or support bandages under the direction of a nurse. As I told you, you are not going to work alone or independently. Anything, it should be with the direction of the nurses. If your patient needs a clean dressing or a wound dressing, it must come from the direction of the nurse. Never do or never, never, never perform any clinical procedure without the order or without the direction of your nurses. Number 16, you have to provide information such as directions, visiting hours, or patient status information to visitors or callers. Provide information means to give directions to the family members. They are looking for the room. They are looking for the x-ray room. They are looking where to, where to go for the laboratory. So all of this, you have to provide them an accurate direction. Visiting hours, you have to inform the family members what time will be the visiting hours. The patient status information, you have to be limited with this thing. The, stat, the patient status, you have to direct them to your nurses or to your doctors. It is a confidential to provide information regarding the status of your patient. So never provide information regarding your patient. It should be very limited. If the, the family is asking, what is the condition of my patient now? You just don't answer that this patient is like this and like that. You have to direct those who are asking to your nurses or to your doctors. Okay, clear? You don't provide information regarding the patient status to your families, to the patient, to the families. Number 17 is transport specimens, laboratory items, or pharmacy items, ensuring proper documentation and delivery, delivery to authorized personnel. So as a nursing aide, it is one of your roles, duties, and responsibilities to transport specimen. We have to collect specimen and transport them 
to the laboratory, but when you go there, you must ensure that you have a proper documents with you, proper request. In, when you are going to the pharmacy, if the nurses are asking you to get some medicine in the pharmacy, so you have to go there with a proper document, a proper prescription. Okay, so you are not just going when they ask you to go, you will just go without any proper documents. Mm -hmm. Transport of medical equipment. So it is a part or it is one of our roles as a nursing aide to transport medical equipment. If for example, the laser, the laser machine is in the other clinic, so the nurses are asking you, requesting you to provide, to, to, to transfer that laser machine equipment in the other area. So you have to transport those medical equipment in a very gently, gentle manner. Okay, not to rush because those machines are so expensive and it will be your responsibility to transport it safely. Set up treating or testing equipment such as oxygen tents Nowadays, in a, in, a, uh, in a modern hospital or a modern medical centers, they don't have like the oxygen cylinders anymore. So all of this oxygen, the, the suction machine, they are all built in. So it is not going to be difficult for you to, to, to set up and uh, to transfer your, those medical equipments. The portable x-rays, they are going to ask you to help them in transporting the portable x-ray. The overhead irrigation bottles, all of those are roles, are, are, are a part of duties and responsibilities of a nursing care, of a nursing aid. Prepare medical instruments or equipment for use. For example, that medical center has a dental clinic. Okay, in that dental clinic, they have lots of medical and dental instruments that are, that are being used. So you should be able to help them, to assist them in preparing those medical equipments, those dental equipment for use. Stock medical or patient care supplies. In your patient care area, it is one of the responsibilities of the nursing aid to set up, to stock up the medical uh, patient care supplies so that before the clinic will start or before the doctor's rounds or the nurse's rounds, all of those equipments, all of those medical and patient care supplies are already available inside of a patient care area. Okay, so those are lots of duties and responsibilities of the nursing care. So everyone has adopt in your mind that all of those are going to be your responsibility when you come to start working in a healthcare facility. Are, are you surprised that all of these are going to be your responsibility? So what do you think? You are going to handle all of those responsibilities? that I have mentioned. So anyway, whatever are those, you are going to put it in your mind that these are your responsibilities in the future as you started to, 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 to learn what is or how are you going to be a nursing aide in the future. Going forward, so we have such, uh, I mean the nursing aide, make such a great career choice. Why? Why did you choose this one? As per the introduction, I just mentioned to you, or I just asked you, what drove you or what, what drive you to take this nursing aid course? Okay, so some of you, you said that you are going to, uh, make, in, uh, to make a difference in from your present work or from your present status as you are working in SATS and you wanted to shift to a medical field. So number one is why, what in the why, why, why you wanted to take this 
nursing course, nursing aid course. Number one is opportunity to make a difference. What do you mean by opportunity to make a difference? Now you have decided that you are going to take this nursing nursing aid course. So you have turned you have turned your your career to be an opportunity to make you a different person, to make you a different individual from those who are not in the same uh, nursing aid that you are going to be. So this go this course number one is going to make you a different individual okay so number one is you will have an opportunity to make a difference number two is professional and personal pride so once you take this nursing aid you will be pro you will be proud of yourself as in personal you will be proud of it and professional wise you are going to be in a medical field now. You are going to start working in a medical field. You are going to be in a team with all those professional medical people. You are going to work in a medical healthcare facility. Okay, so that is one of making you a different from others. So emotionally rewarding. When you feel like you are going to finish this course so you will be rewarded emotionally within yourself you will feel like uh, i am proud i am emotionally pr proud that i'm going to be a nursing aide later on so this is also an another rewarding personally for yourselves affordable course all of you has paid only this amount very affordable uh, very affordable amount or very affordable cost for you to learn, for you to study this nursing aid. And after all, once you have finished this course, you will be stable with your profession. Going to it, your, your job stability and your job security is one of those uh, wh why, why you have chosen this field. So you, number one, you have to be stable in your job. So 20 years from now, when you take this nursing aid as you are in now, uh, as you are in right now, so you are going to be stable in your job, especially now that it is COVID pandemic. So all, almost all the people now are in the medical field because we need you in the medical field. We need you to take care of those people who really needs help so we are going to be there you will be your job is going to be stable and your job security job security means you are going to be paid off you are going to be paid in uh, in like for example that you are that you are in your present career now so once you finish with the nursing aid at least you will have at least a double of it or more than what you are earning right now. So ability to work in various sectors. So not only in one field of medical center, but you will, but you are going to work also in a hospital, in a bigger hospital, or in a long-term health care, or in a home care. So all of this in the various sectors you are going to work with. Flexibility, you will be able to flex your time. You are going to have your flexibility. You are going to have your double duty if you want to. So in earning more of those money, of those earnings, a little high earnings from the present that you are taking now, so you are going to have it more when the time comes that you completed your course. So easier to get accepted in the nursing program. If most of you are thinking of after the nursing aid course, you wanted to go a little farther or a, a, a little level up from the nursing aid. So you can be accepted in a nursing program. Why? So at present, your nursing aid uh, curriculum or the module that you are going to take right now, it's going to be evaluated and it's going to be assessed if you are planning to go 
to the level of the nursing program. So it's going to be accepted. You are going to be evaluated. Your lessons that you are going to have now, it will be evaluated. It will be assessed. So next time, if you are going to that nursing program, so you will be having only few uh, because you have taken most of those nursing fundamentals. Ability to take care of loved ones better. So nowadays, as you start, uh, as you start to have this course, in your family, you're going to take care of your beloved family right now. So especially all of you who are having now the children, who are having a family, so it will be an opportunity for you to, to take good care of them. You know, like for example, uh, you are going to, or your mom, mom, or the the brothers, or whoever is having a high 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 blood pressure. So once you take this nursing aid course, we are going to study how to take the vital signs, and one of those is going to be blood pressure. How to take the blood blood pressure? How to measure the blood pressure? And in that case, your parents you will be able to take care of your parents by taking the, the blood pressure for your parents. You are not going to call for your neighbors to just, can you please take, uh, take the blood pressure of my mom? So it is not going to be like that anymore. So once you know it, once you learned how to measure all those, uh, I mean, vital signs, so you will be going to, you will be able to take care of your loved ones now. Okay, so all of this, these are going, these as you choose to, uh, as you choose your nursing aid career now, so you are going to have all of this. So for a better future. Okay, so we have done with the introduction to nursing aid. This is only introduction. And out of this introduction, we have already, I mean, we, we knew what is nursing aid, what is going to be a nursing aid, what career opportunity you will have when you finish this course. Uh, I mean, what are, uh, what are the roles and responsibilities that we have taken? What are the, um, um, how did you understand a nursing aid now from this, uh, from this concept? What are the career opportunities? What are the skills of a nursing aid? So out of this, you are going to put up yourself as in one of those nursing aid in the future. Okay, from the lesson one, this is one lesson now that we already had done. So is there anything that you want to clarify? Is there anything that you want to, to, to explain more that you did not understand? Is there any question? Is there anything that you need to elaborate more? Clear? What is your purpose here? What is the basic function of a nursing aid. So you know now, what is your basic nursing aid function? Okay, so what is your nursing aid function now? The basic nursing aid, the fundamental of your nursing aid career. So you are going to perform what? You have to provide patients.